Our annual survey is going strong and we don't want to miss your feedback. Go to twit.tv slash survey21 to take it now before it closes in February. The survey helps us understand our audience so we can make our listening experience even better. It only takes a few minutes. Go to twit.tv slash survey21 to take it. Thank you. This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands-On Photography here on Twit TV. I hope you're doing well. I am unbelievable as always. This is a podcast where I like to sit down and share with you different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and also a better post-processor because, yes, post-processing is a part of photography, whether you want to hear that or not. It's just the facts. (laughs) If this is your first time joining me, Thank you and welcome to you. Now, just do me a favor when whatever podcast app you're enjoying this on, either uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts or a YouTube channel, whatever. Go ahead and hit subscribe right now and subscribe to the show so you can get all of our episodes as they um, are uploaded automatically each and every Thursday. And while you're in that app, go ahead and hit the ratings and the likes and stars and all of that good stuff, especially if you're on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Give us a star rating over there on Apple Podcasts or also known as iTunes to you older folks like myself. Uh, Give us a star rating over there as well as a review that will help push up hands on photography uh, so other people can find it a little bit faster and also help grow our audience and hands on photography community. You know, you doing that really does mean a lot and does help us out. I really appreciate that. But if you have any other questions about our subscription options, just head on over to the website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P. And you'll see all of our subscription options right there. OK, so let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. Now, let's just face it, folks. Selfies. It is what it is. Selfies are a part of um normal society nowadays. It's just, it is what it is. I, for one, I am not a selfie person. It's just, I know you find that hard to believe. You see a beautiful, handsome man like myself, and he's just not into doing selfies. I know that's quite shocking (laughs) considering how most people are today, but no, I'm just not a selfie person. I've never been really comfortable with shooting selfies. But I do have a bit of an affinity for self-portraits. I think self-portraits are a bit more um, captivating and interesting uh, when you see them on your smartphones or on whatever screen that you're enjoying them on. And today I want to talk about the difference between setting up a selfie versus setting up a self-portrait. And I promise you, you doing a self-portrait versus a selfie It's going to get a whole lot more interaction and engagement and questions and curiosity about that shot versus the selfie. I I promise you it it works every single time. Why is that? Well, when you think of a selfie, people are using their smartphones in most instances and they're using the the, the front facing camera 99% of the time. Now, the, the lenses on these front facing cameras, they will they offer a wide, wide angle perspective. And in doing so, you get a, quite a bit of distortion in the image. So when you hold it up and you snap the photo, a lot of times your head will look a little bit more bulbous or your nose will look bigger or your head will look out of proportion to your neck and shoulders. And it's not because you look that weird but no it's just the distortion from the camera that's just how it is because you know the the smartphone manufacturers have wide angle lenses on that front of the camera so how do you combat that well yeah you could just flip it around and do it another way with the rear camera on your smartphone and that'll work just as fine but it's still going to give you that same odd weird perspective of a camera lens is in front of you and you got your arm outstretched so your shoulder is a little bit cockeyed compared to your other shoulder and just it's it just it just doesn't work but a self-portrait self-portraits makes you as a creator makes you think through this process a little bit more and today i want to share with you just a, a simple couple tips to get yourself squared away to do a self-portrait versus doing a selfie all right First things first, figure out what camera you're going to use. In my instance, I like to use my DSLRs. 
Why? Because I could put a DSLR on a tripod and I could control it remotely via a smartphone app or just use the timer that's built into the camera to get myself squared away and, and be able to get the shot. So now that you figured out your camera, next you need to figure out your scene, figure out where you would like this shot to happen. In my example, I wanted to do just a bit of a self portrait down in my, in my living room because this is a beautiful large window in my living room that's gonna give me just amazing light. I'm not having to set up this key light that's right here in front of me or a hair light or a backlight behind me or anything like that. I just have one light source that's gonna be beautiful, flattering light, and it's not gonna cost me a thing. So I have my, my setting, I have the equipment, the camera, and I have the lighting, the window. Okay, what's the next step? Think about the composition. So if you're in a specific scene, how would you like your posing to be? And I know posing can be a little bit uncomfortable for some people, but you have to think about it. If you open up a magazine and look at your favorite models or actors and actresses or what have you, pretty much most of the shots that are set up in their photo shoots, they are posed. And they're posed for a reason because the pose can help tell a story. I don't care how great the photographer is with their technical skills with getting the, the exposure right, uh, perfect shutter speed, perfect ISO, uh, no grain, yada, 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 all that technical talk. That, that means absolutely nothing if there's no story there to captivate the viewer. And they know that. So they will work with the model and have the model pose to help tell the story. So find yourself to get comfortable with posing for your own self-portrait. For me, I'm in my living room. It's right next to this, this big, big old window. My couch is right there. My couch is so soft and cushy. And every time I sit on it, I end up lying down and falling asleep, snoring quite loudly. I wanted to present that mood. I wanted to present sitting down on my couch, actually more like lying down on my couch in front of the window and just staring out and relaxing. So that's how I'm going to set up that pose. So now that you figure out how to get your composition squared away, let's get the camera set up. Most cameras have some sort of a timer on them. You can use your DSLR or you can use your smartphone or your mirrorless, whatever camera you have, but most of them have some sort of a timer that allows you to sit them on a tripod and, and work with it uh, from the other side of the lens. Set up your camera, set up your tripod in your particular spot. I have mine set right behind the couch here for my scene. That way the camera is getting a pretty nice, tight focal length on me, the subject matter. It's not shooting all of the extra stuff behind me in the living room because none of that matters. None of that tells the story. Okay, so I got that lined up. I decided to set the, the uh, countdown timer to give me 10 seconds to engage the shutter sit down, get myself posed. And then after 10 seconds, the camera will snap the photograph. This is a pretty easy and simple process to do. Uh, for example, I'm using Canon's mobile app, uh, the Canon Connect. It is, it is wonky. Sometimes it, it, it can drive me nuts, but about 85% of the time that app will get the job done. But it allows me to look at my framing right there on my phone to make sure everything is in focus. I can change the shutter speed. I can change the aperture and ISO and even change the, uh, the driving mode if I want to shoot multiple shots at one time and things like that. It's convenient for that and it's perfect for shooting self portraits. So got my app squared away, got everything framed up, grabbed a nice prop because a prop will also help tell the story. So I grabbed an, a nice interesting, uh, beverage, if you will, and posed for the camera, hit the shutter, and I'm good to go. And quite frankly, I think this came out rather, rather nicely. Of course, I can't just shoot it and leave it straight out of the camera. I went ahead and pulled it into Lightroom and Photoshop, did just a little bit of touch up on it because that's just what I do, and came out with this photograph. I think it looks great. It was a lot of fun to do. It took me less than half an hour to get all of this squared away. And uh, 
I can look forward to doing this again and maybe challenging myself to another bit of a self portrait challenge. Um, there's a hashtag that I have on my Instagram where I did a self portrait challenge um, for, you know, back most of 2020 because 2020 was such a ooh, interesting year. And it allowed me to just explore a little bit more of my creativity to help me further grow in this world of photography. And my challenge to you do the same thing. Grab your camera, grab yourself a little tripod. If it's just something for your smartphone, I'll have uh, links in our show notes that will allow you to check out some mini tripods for your phone or just whatever camera you have and uh, get it set up, set up a scene. Think about the composition, walk through what's going to work for you. Walk, walk through the story that you would like to present to your viewers, snap it, Share it up, share it out with me. Heck, if you feel like it, just send it on over to hop at twit.tv. I'd love to see what you come up with. Yeah, just shoot an email. Let's do that. Okay, that's my challenge to you. All right, so that's going to do it for this week's episode, folks. Thank you for checking out the show each and every week here on the network. Again, if you have any questions or feedback about photography, post-processing, or uh, just some other general questions, shoot an email to hop at twit.tv or feel free to give me a follow and tag on those wonderful social media platforms of Twitter. I am ant underscore Pruitt over there. And on Instagram, I am ant underscore Pruitt there. Particularly follow me on Instagram because I like to do a little bit of behind the scenes stuff and share exactly what I'm working on regarding a particular shot or regarding setting up the show. You never know what you'll see there. Thank you all so much for the continued support. Now safely create and dominate, and I will catch you all next time. Take care. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to another show here on the Twit Network. If you are a fan of home automation, internet of things, and all things smart technology, you should check out my podcast, Smart Tech Today. I do it with Matthew Casanelli, and we have so much fun talking about all the latest news for all things smart tech.